Hello everyone, welcome to the world of DSP, which stands for Digital Signal Processing. Okay, so first let us know about what is a signal. So that is the basic thing here. So signal is an entity which carries any information. So if we can classify the signal, so we can classify it into basic thing as analog signal and a digital signal. Okay. So next, what is an analog signal? So analog signal is a signal which varies continuously with time. What is a digital signal? So digital signal is a signal which is discrete in time. So that means which doesn't varies continuously like your analog signal. So for a particular duration of time, the digital signal will be constant. For the next particular duration, for the next set of time, the voltage or the current will be constant for that particular time. So that is about the analog signal and the digital signal. Next, coming to the heading, in the heading we can see digital signal processing. So we just saw what is a signal, what is a digital signal. So next is what is processing. So processing is basically uh, into two types. One is the analysis and one is the synthesis. What is analysis? So analysis is the estimation of the signal. Next thing is synthesis. So synthesis is basically to create or generate our own signal. So here we can see what is an analog signal and what is a digital signal. So the upper one, upper signal is an analog signal, the one which varies continuously with time. That is at any point of time you can see the amplitude or the voltage or the current, whatever you assume it as the y-axis, is never a constant. It keeps on varying with respect to time. So next one, if you can see the digital signal below it, you can see that it is constant for a particular duration of time. Maybe for 5 seconds or 10 seconds, it is on and then it is off for a particular duration of time. Next, we'll look at, at a basic uh, uh, DSP block diagram. So wherein uh, we have these many blocks, sensor, ADC which stands for analog to digital converter, a processor, digital to analog converter, DAC and an actuator. So I'll, I'll just ex uh, uh, explain this with respect to an example of a mic and a speaker in a classroom. So if it is a huge classroom, we, there is a need for a mic because the speaker or the trainer who is there, the last pins or the other students in the end cannot listen to these things. So there is a need for amplification. So the speaker has got a mic in his hand. So he speaks into the mic. So what is happening is whatever the speaker speaks, it is an analog in nature. So the purpose of this mic is to convert into this signal, analog signal into digital signal. So once the signal is getting converted into digital, then we give it to a DSP processor, which does all the processing task according to the applications and produces a signal. So finally, we have to give the signal to a speaker. So speaker in general will not accept digital signal as its input. So it requires analog signal only as its output. So this digital signal has to be converted in some format into analog format. So before we give it to a speaker. So for that purpose, we are using this DAC. So DAC is a device which converts digital signal back into analog. So that is how the complete cycle or the process ends. That is I speak or the mic so it is analog in nature so mic converts it's a kind of transducer which converts analog signal into digital then it goes to the dsp processor which does all the processing like removing the noise or whatever is the application so amplification it does it and then before giving to the speaker we give it to the dac because speaker expects the signal in analog format so next thing when you talk about analog to digital converter there is an important thing which comes into picture which is called as sampling theorem or your sampling process. So what is sampling? Why sampling is required? So when we talk about what is sampling, so when we want to convert an analog signal to digital signal, there are three steps or three processes which has to be followed to convert from analog to digital. So that is sampling, quantizing and encoding. So first when we talk about sampling, so it is the number of samples what we take. So it has been given by this Nyquist theorem. So which states that uh, the sampling frequency should be twice 
the highest frequency component present in the signal. So if we, what happens if we sample it at a lesser rate? So then there will be aliasing and we will not be able to reconstruct back our original signals. So what happens if the sampling rate is very high? So if the sampling rate is very high, we'll be getting too much of samples and the data requirement will be too high. So next one is quantization. So in quantization, what we do is we will be having levels. These samples will be quantized into different levels. So here there will be an error which is called as rounding of error or we call it as quantization error. So that could be adjusted according to it. Last process is encoding. Encoding is we will be given, giving each quantization level a digital value or a numbers. So based on this, we can convert the signal from analog to digital. So if we start looking at the applications of uh, digital signal processing, so there are many applications, many fields in which digital signal processing is mandatory. So looking into it, it is space or medical field or is it commercial, telephone, military, industrial, scientific. So any field, digital signal processing is mandatory. So here uh, we come to a conclusion that uh, DSP is mandatory for any signal processing wherever uh, we have to filter the data. So signal processing is mandatory. Thank you.